We will get started. I would like to introduce our first speaker and presenter, and that is our esteemed supervisor of the 5th District, Mike Antonovich. Thank you very much, and uh, we want to thank everybody who's here today as we begin to uh, uh, pick up the pieces from one of the uh, worst fires in, in our history. Uh, uh, it was the worst fire in Los Angeles County, and it's the 10th largest fire in the state of California. And I especially want to th thank, I see La Cunada's uh, city council members are here uh, for the great job they did on public information along with the uh, uh, town councils, Juniper Hills and uh, in, uh, uh, Crescenta, La Crescenta Town Council is here along with the, um, the Summon uh, Dahunga area. Uh, they really, they really did an incredible job uh, in, in, at the time when we had a lack of information. Uh, uh, the people really relied upon you, and uh, we really appreciate that. Our own system in the county is going to do a thorough critique and review to ensure that uh, they are able to perform a better job in the future when we have such a, a catastrophe. And those uh, 2 30, 3 30 a.m. calls uh, that you thought disturbed you, uh, they even reached Rosemead. And uh, the councilwoman in Rosemary, she gets the call and she says, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and, and then she had the foresight to know that the fire wasn't there, but it, she had to go check first, you know. But uh, Margaret was interesting. So anyway, that's being reviewed as well. Uh, just to give you a, a, an update of what happened, the fire is still burning. And uh, I've just been advised they're waiting for rain. So um, I think they're going to have the patience of Jude to do that. Uh, because it looks like next week it's still going to be in the, in the, from the 90s to the 80s, so it's, uh, maybe the Stanford football team, the Indians out there, could do some dancing and help uh, expedite that. Anyway, 163,000 acres thus far has burned. Uh, the Quionis' uh, wife had delivered a, a baby girl, uh, I believe it was yesterday, and, and uh, yesterday or day before yesterday, and uh, so we're all going to pull together to help that, uh, that child. Anyway, we had two, two tragic deaths. And th those two men were trying to save their, their camp. Uh, and, and those inmates in that camp risked their lives. And a couple got burned in trying to rescue those officers when they went down that uh, ravine. But they're real heroes. Uh, over 200 residential and commercial properties had been damaged. And we know many of our homes. Uh, uh, had been destroyed, and many were damaged. Uh, it, uh, the sad part is the fire was uh, deliberately set, and they found one young man, 13, for uh, the Azusa fire, and they have not located yet any, uh, as far as I know, I haven't been advised, and I'm seeing uh, they're agreeing that we haven't located the person or persons responsible for the station fire. Uh, the primary uh, damage, uh, preliminary dam damage exceeds $100 million. Uh, the forest was totally devastated. Much of the county road system has been badly uh, damaged. And, and Joyce is here, and you'll hear from Public Works. They're doing an incredible job doing right now the uh, necessary uh, uh, inventory and beginning to help uh, repair some of those roads that were damaged. So now we've moved from fighting the fire to the recovery and repair stage. And to, to uh, expedite that, uh, our board has approved and authorized Public Works to spend up to $25 million in emergency contracts to restore the access to the families, the businesses, and the uh, residents. And we have already completed much of the physical repairs to the county roads, including replacing signs, marker, and restriping. Public Works is working to replace almost 100 sections of destroyed guardrail and removed more than 850 burned trees. So we're coordinating with Caltrans and the United States Forest Service to develop a plan for reopening the force as soon as possible as when it's declared to be safe. Now what we have to worry about, what we're going to be praying for the rain, is that when the rains do come, we're going to, now going to have mudslides. So with the physical repair roads and structures being completed, uh, the mud, stri mud flows will be our top priority, and our participation in today's meeting is to help prepare us for that. You will receive assessments from the Burn Area Emergency Response Team and the county workers on potential uh, uh, debris and mud flow issue. 
This is very, very critical because it will also save life. Now, those uh, who are familiar with uh, La Crescenta Valley, their historical society did a, a wonderful DVD. It's, uh, it's an award-winning DVD, and I'd encourage all of you to uh, get a copy of it because it's very interesting. It shows the history of Crescenta Valley, or La Cunada, Sunland Tahunga area, a lot of facts that people didn't know. But at the time, and it was, I guess it was the early 1900s, they did forestry, cutting down all the trees in the Andrews Crest Forest, and then the rains came, and the boulders that came down, uh, there was actual people were killed. Uh, it was a, one of the worst uh, mud slides in, in history. And there was one boulder that was so large that they could not break it up. So they decided to bury it. And today that's buried at the at, uh, Smith Toyota on Pennsylvania and Foothill in the parking lot. That's the, uh, where the rock is. But it has little bits of history like that. And it's uh, enjoyable because the Historical segments are in two and three minute segments, so you can see one in advance to the other. Anyway, uh, so this is what we have to worry about now, the boulders and others coming down with the, with the mudslides. So our county flood control system, which is one of the finest in the world, has been engineered for these types of disasters, but not for those big boulders. I mean, that's, that's a problem. Public works are now looking to increase the capacity at seven debris basins and are cleaning out an additional nine basins before the start of the rainy season. And you're going to learn more about these preparations in today's program. So from this moment on, coordination, communication is the key to minimize, minimizing the med flows and protecting lives in the property. So to expedite this, as I said, uh, we have already allotted those uh, authorities to Joyce uh, and, and the Public Works Department to get out and get those contracts. You bypass all the bu bureaucracy and red tape so we can begin servicing you by protecting you. 